Welcome to another video. Today we will talk about of your pendulum orchids, especially how to rebloom your beautiful sleeper orchid. These videos chosen by you, actually I had a poll in my community section where I ask you to which content you'd like to see this week and most of you voted for the Pafio Pedalo, so I'm doing this video for you. We have an amazing dark day in London today, very gray and rainy, as you can see right now. But without further ado, let's start talking about this beautiful, beautiful orchid that I love so much, and I hope you are able to rebloom as well, and loving to grow them and watching them bloom as much as I do. So the first thing about these orchids is that they grow in the canopy of the forest. Most of them, they come from Southeast Asia and they grow on soils or tree trunks near moss. So they are terrestrial or semi-terrestrial orchids. And being in the middle of the canopy of the forest, these plants usually received indirect sunlight so they receive diffuse light that's really important so the first advice that i will give to you today it's about lighting a few pedlums they are very easy to grow because you can place them everywhere in your house you don't need to have growing lights to grow them or a super bright window actually you need to be careful because if it's summer and spring and you live in the northern hemisphere like I do, if you place them in a southern eastern window, you need to have curtains to have filtered sunlight. The excessive amount of light can definitely burn its leaves and affect its growth. So the first thing that I would advise you is if you live in the northern hemisphere, avoid the brightest spot. If you live in the southern hemisphere, also avoid the opposite direction that's the brightest spot only if you have curtains to diffuse the light that will touch the leaf of these leaper orchids also you can definitely place it on maybe in your own table your shelving near a window that you receive some indirect sunlight they will enjoy they will love it you don't need to have growing lights to grow them they grow perfectly fine with some indirect light. So for this reason, I think they are perfect house plants. And on top of that, some of them has beautiful foliage because they have that mottled leaves that you can enjoy for the whole year. In terms of light, they are super easy to grow, but don't place them in a darker corner that receive almost no light, so your plant won't bloom for you. So avoid dark spots. Remember, these are plants, so they need to photosynthesize. They need to receive some light, but also avoid super bright and direct sunlight. More than that, you can grow them anywhere in your home where you have diffuse light, growing lights. I do have some of mine growing under growing light. It won't affect them but you can also grow them with some indirect bright light or indirect light, as I'm showing you, I have some of them in a space of my house where I don't have any growing lights and that they are doing fine. This one bloomed for me only with natural light as well. All the options for you, that's why I think it's one of the most versatile and easy to grow orchid. Next topic is about the structure of these plants. So they are sympodial orchids, not monopodial orchids. What does this mean? Do you know Phalaenopsis, the moth orchids that we see everywhere? These are monopodial orchids. And although Pafiopedinum leaves can be similar to Phalaenopsis, some people think they are probably similar in their structure. They are not. Phalaenopsis, they are monopodial which means that they grow one leaf after another one, after another one, and you grow a central axis. A few pedlins, they are sympodial orchids. That means they are closer to oncidians and cattleyas than phalaenopsis, but they don't have pseudobulbs. So do you know the pseudobulbs that structure in cattleyas or in oncidians that they use to store water and nutrients? In the case of Paphiopedlons, they do not have these pseudobulbs. So what they have, they have funds. 
funds, it's basically they sprout in new growth that's made out of leaves and that will become mature and when it's fully mature, it will bloom for you. So instead of producing pseudobulbs, they produce funds. But because they do not have pseudobulbs, they do not store water and nutrients as easily as cattleyas and oncidians, for example. So they are more sensitive to drought than the other plants. What I would advise you to do for you to have beautiful blooms of your sleeper orchid is to keep an eye on its watering routine. These plants, they hate to become completely dry and or dry for a very long time. As I said, they are not very drought tolerant plants. And if you wanna have very healthy of your pebbles in your home, you need to touch the soil or touch the mix that you're using to pot your plant in and check if it's equally moist. And when it starts to drying out, you can offer it some watering. Like cattleyas, I usually wait for them to dry out completely for me to give them more water. These plants, I don't let them dry out completely, or at least I try not to. It can happen, they won't die if you forget once, but they hate being dried for very long because they don't have this special structure that will save water and will save nutrients and will keep them watered for longer. So they are more sensitive to humidity than the other plants. <sighs> the most difficult thing about Puffia pedalons is their watering routine. They need a little bit more water maybe than other sympodias, but more than that, if you keep an eye on it or if you decide to put it in a mix that retain more water if you live in a hot country, they will love it. Or just go with your usual mix, but make sure your plants don't become completely dry. The next tip that I'm gonna give you, it's about the soil mix or the mix that you pot your Puffia pedalum in. As I said in the beginning of this video, these plants, they are not epiphytes like Phalaenopsis, Vandas, Cattleyas. They usually, they grow in soils or they grow in the moss, in the canopy of the forest. So they don't have aerial roots that will grow out of your pot. Because of that, you need to pot the plant inside the pot and cover the roots. If you have roots poking through out of the mix, these roots, they won't survive because they are not aerial roots. You don't have enough humidity for these plants to grow in the air. They are not adapted to that. They need to grow inside the potting mix. So remember when you pot your Puffia pedalum, to pot it to cover all of its roots. Okay, go until the base where you see all of the roots are covered, but also offer it a mix that will give it a humidity, but also air at the same time. Don't go with packed soil. I wouldn't advise you to do that. If we are using soil, use it with perlite, bark, Place a lot of things that will keep it aerated at the same time. What I would advise you to do, I use my usual mix, my usual orchid mix, and these plants, they do super well. So what I'm, I'm using here is basically moss and bark. They love it. I don't have any problem growing them with it. With a few pedalons, I can give it a little bit more moss, but I live in a cold country, so I don't pot them all in moss because I can have some root rot if I water them so much. But I would advise you, if you decided to go with something that is water retentive medium or something that can suffocate the roots, remember to place things to aerate the medium. And you can use any medium that you use to pot your orchids in if they allow some humidity to be around the root system as well. Don't go with mixes that will provide only air. That's another dangerous thing. Remember, they grow in the soil or in a similar environment to soil, but they don't grow in the air. I know that sounds very complicated, but go with something that will provide moist and air at the same time. I go with bark and sphagnum moss, and it works fine. It's the same thing that I do with all of my other orchids. They grow and they bloom for me. And place your plant where they receive some indirect sunlight or maybe artificial lighting. If you notice that all the roots are inside the pot, they grow well for you. 
So the moment that everyone was waiting for, let's talk about flowers and let's talk about how they flower and uh, how can you get beautiful blooms. Most of your pedalums, they are super easy to grow in your homes because they enjoy intermediate temperature. They will do well with the humidity that we have in our house. You don't need to offer any humidifier or anything like that. They are one of the easiest for orchid to grow. And for you to rebloom it, it's no different. The only difference here is that this plant they are is low to grow and to bloom. Lots of people don't like puffy pedalums and slippery orchids in general because they take a long time to produce a new growth and to rebloom. That's actually true. So if you want to have blooms each month, you can definitely go with other orchids. We have Phalaenopsis that can bloom for three months non-stop. And then we have Oncidians, some hybrids that will rebloom many times a year. We also have Cattleyas, we have others. But if you wanna have some foliage and maybe some plants that will bloom once a year for you or maybe once each two year, I would advise you, yeah, that's what you get. You're gonna get a puffy pedalum that probably will give you that. If you have other orchids as well, you won't miss having puffy pedalums blooms all the time. And when they bloom for you, it's gonna be a great surprise. And uh, usually they bring so much joy because I love how the pouch looks like and, uh, and how the whole structure of the flowers are. So the first thing for you to know is they are slower growers, which means that you may have some of hybrids that will bloom once a year for you, or there maybe will skip one year, or there maybe each 18 months. So they don't mature a whole fun in one month or maybe in a few months. Some of them, they require a year to produce a wholly new fun, that's the new growth and then produce a flower spike. So that's the first point for you to know about how to rebloom these orchids. Some of them, because they are species, they are also seasonal. So it's very common, for example, this one usually blooms for me in autumn. The basic thing for you to know to rebloom your puffy pedalum is to give it enough light, enough watering, fertilize it as you fertilize all of your other orchids. I do play some bits of soil release fertilizing its pot and I fertilize it with my other orchids. If you do it, if you pot it in appropriate potting mix with the roots inside the pot, more than that, some of them are slower. This one is not the case. This one blooms for me at least once a year. I think when the temperature drops, it will rebloom for me. And I do have other ones and they have different patterns. I've showed you some of them during my What's Flower Inside My Indoor Garden or in with other videos about puffy pedalums, basically giving it appropriate care and it will eventually bloom for you. You just need to be a little bit patient because these plants, they, they do take a while to mature their growths and to produce their bloom. Just for you to know, most of, not most of them, but a lot of puffy pedalums, they will produce one flower per spike. The ones that I had, the flowers are never tiny. I believe there, be, there may be smaller puffy pedalums, but the ones that I own, all of its flowers, they are large or medium sized flowers. And as you can see, this one produces only one flower per spike. So one fawn can produce only one flower spike that will give me one bloom that will last for like a month. Some of them are gonna have a stem that will produce multiple flowers. So when the flowers are done of these spikes, the spike will never rebloom for you. They will eventually die. So you can definitely cut the spike off because nothing will sprout from there. What will happen with this plant is that after the bloom is gone, they will produce a new fun and we, they will start the cycle again. And then for you to have a new bloom only when this fun is completely mature. What you also can have with puffy pedalons are some puffy pedalons, they can produce one bloom after another on the same spike for maybe almost a year or eight months or so. They will keep blooming non-stop. So if you want a puffy pedalum that will give you lots of blooms for a long period of time, you may go for one of these. They are great for beginners. 
One great example is the famous Pathiopadon of Pinocchio. I've showed him here many times. This one is what we call a sequential bloomer. I created a short video, I link it down below, where I explain what is a sequential bloomer, and also I showed you all of the blooms that this plant produced for me. But if you want a, a Pathiopadon that will bloom for many, many months, you can go to a sequential bloom one. And to conclude this video, since you're talking about flowers, Pathiopadlons, they produced a variety of different sized flowers, different colored and patterned flowers. They are, for me, they are beautiful. I find it quite interesting. They call attention of, I know people that they don't really like orchids and they see Pathiopadlons and they're like, oh wow, because they have this different look. I don't know how to explain, maybe it's because of the pout that with the sleeper orchids in general. But with all of these sleeper orchids, and as far as my knowledge goes, I think Pathiopedalum is the easiest one for you to grow at home. And again, it's the one that you can have a variety of hybrids with different colors, patterns, and size. You have the ones that produce many flowers, the ones that produce only one flower the ones that will, will be successfully blooming for you. So it is a great type of orchid for you to have at your home and you can enjoy it for years and years to come. It will produce many fun for you and it's so easy to grow. So I'm sure you'll be able to rebloom your orchid. If you enjoy Puffy of Pedalons and if you learned something nice with this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel. It will be amazing to have you here, to have you on board. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye!